I'm gonna give you guys a behind the scenes, some extra footage here from behind the scenes, I should say, of this Orion Concept 97.1. Have it here, my favorite area. I would say this is a test bench, but this is more like <laughs> the dinner table because I really do like the finish, rough finish, and I like the light in this room. But uh, I'm gonna hook up the ELAC bookshelf speakers. I would hook up car speakers, but it's just easier to hook up the home speakers because they're already in an enclosure and all that. I do have the Soundstream SPL 10s we're gonna wire. These are dual fours, so wired together, that will be one ohm load on the amp. And this does have a high current section which will handle one ohm mono. And I decided just for fun, I usually use like an MP3 player or something, but I thought it might be neat to try something kind of era specific here. This Alpine, this is a 7840, I believe, which I think came out around 97, 98 time frame, something like that. It's got the four volt pre-out CD shuttle control. It does have a volume knob. Thank you, Alpine. And I believe it works. Not 100% sure, but I will find out. And of course, I burned me some royalty-free music onto a CD. YouTube said it's aight. So they say it's aight. It's going to be aight. So I'm going to get this all hooked up. Again, hopefully this works. If it doesn't, I'll have to find a different route. But um, yeah, it's got front and rear pre-outs. And I'm pretty sure that I've hooked it up before and it does work. But can't always trust this old school gear, especially the head units. They just, um, the CD mechanisms don't tend to last all that long. But anyway, I'm gonna get everything all hooked up and I'll give you guys a quick demo before I make the real demo for the video. I've talked about hating these connectors, these Weco plugs. And one of the reasons is they get freaking stuck in the amp. And they're so hard to get out. That's, that's the first pain. Of course, these are not in so hard because I didn't push them in very far. But this one right here is literally stuck. And that's why a lot of these end panels get scratched up because you have to use a pry mechanism. I think it's getting ready to come out. There we go. So the other thing I hate about it is how close they are. You have to be super careful to not have your wires touch. So I've actually, you know got the ferrules here that I can use to put these in and obviously make sure so positive is on that side, this will be negative. So I get out my flat screwdriver and I'm gonna get this tightened down as well as all the speaker leads. Here's the speaker plug. This is the five pin, which also includes the remote turn on. And once again, these things are hateful. They're hateful because they're so small. It's so difficult to get the speaker wires in there. And this is only like probably 18 gauge speaker wire. And the way these terminals work is they have this little flapper that flaps down to tighten it up once you tighten up the flat screw here on the bottom and that holds it in again not perfect and just not really a good design at the time companies like Soundstream had the insert terminals on their amps Soundstream was so far ahead of their time and other companies were really just lagging as far as the connectors on the amps because I mean how often did you need to pull your amp out why did you need removable plugs like this I mean, at least it wasn't Molex style, but still, that's a pain. And of course, this one's the one that's got the remote on there too. So let's get that remote wire. Add it here. Got to make sure we don't have any loose dangling wires, of course. That would be problematic. And sometimes that little flapper gets stuck in the up position, but I think it's okay here. Let's tighten it up. That one's good. This side doesn't seem to be pushed in quite far enough, but that is okay for government work. So let's go ahead and get it inserted into the amp. So again, on this version, this is the same as the HCCA 150, the first gen of those, which is a pop top. 
the second gen of the 150 called the 150R actually had the high current section here and the high power section is here. So they switched it all around. Plus they changed the amplifier modules, I think inside and made that one two HCCA amps. This one is an XTR and an HCCA amp. But um, anyway, you'll see that during the test. I'm also gonna explain this in the video, but very odd with this amp, channel one is actually right, channel two is left, channel three is right, channel four is left. So they have it kind of reversed in my mind because I usually think left, right. So in this case, I have the left channel and I'm gonna, <laughs> and I'm gonna put it on the right side of the connector. I guess they're thinking upside down or, or backwards or something but uh, let's get both of these loosened up. This is the ones going to the ELAC bookshelf speakers. And these have the little ferrules in them, but these, again, this is like uh, 18 gauge speaker wire. So I've got enough room with the ferrules, which has plenty of size big enough for doing the testing I'm gonna do today. Let's get the other side hooked in. So according to that, it's minus plus. So we'll go minus First, minus, and plus. This one looks clean. I like the way it looks with these ferrules like this. So let's get it plugged into the amp. I'll show you that. Weko for the lose. I don't want to get it plugged in too far because it's, it's so hard to get out. So I want to get it far enough where it's making a good connection. There we go. All right, so we have Soundstream SPLs bridged here using channel four positive, channel three negative. And then we have stereo connections there for the front. And we're gonna get the Alpine hooked up next and we'll fire it up and make sure it works before we uh, plug it in to the amplifier. All right, I lied a little bit. I want to go ahead and get the amp hooked up here to the uh, terminal block or to the distribution block, I should say. That power going here. We'll also get the remote turn on going in to one of these. We'll fold it over so it'll fit better. All right, that's all connected. So we still have to leave availability for the head unit, but let's go ahead while we're here and get the amplifier going into the other distribution block for the ground. I love these Stinger distribution blocks. I have used these literally forever and a day and continue to use them. Stinger was actually one of the first companies that reached out to me many, many years ago, and I greatly appreciate it because they kind of quote unquote sponsored me at the time. It was literally just giving me some gear that I needed to help make my videos, but they were very kind in that with the power. You can still see I use the Pro Series uh, power and ground. Had a lot of their speaker wire too. Of course, I've gone through most of all of that. But uh, anyway, I digress. Let's move on to hooking up the Alpine and make sure that it works. So as you can probably imagine, the wires here on the Alpine are pretty short. So we're just gonna go right into the distribution block here. We're not gonna use a turn on. We're actually just gonna, once the power comes on, it will come on because we have the turn on hooked up straight to the power. And then the ground, hopefully this one's a little longer, which it's long enough to go in right here. Gonna get the right Allen key. So Allen always needs his key. All right, that's good. So I think we're good now to try out the Alpine and make sure that it comes on. Fired up the power supply. I'm using the tar amps power supply. And let's see if the Alpine comes on. So I think the screen was in some kind of a blackout mode because it actually is working. Let's see here if it will accept the disc and play. Hey, 
Hey, it's working. All right. Now, where's the pause? I hate when they don't have pause buttons on here. Band, source, pause. Okay. All right. So let's get it hooked up now to the concept and we'll get us a little sound demo. What you say? Found out something really interesting about this Alpine. The RCAs on the back are recessed. Might be hard to see way down in there, but believe it or not, these style RCAs would not even fit because they were too wide to actually fit in there. So I'm going with two channel out. Supposedly this amp will work according to the manual. You, can only, you only have to use two channels input to get all four channels of output. So we're gonna find that out. Let's see if it works. Now I haven't played around with the crossovers and honestly, crossovers on this thing are a nightmare because you've got potentiometers, you've got switches here, switches here, switches here, you got jumpers here, all kind of crazy stuff. And I've looked through the manual many, many times. I'm still trying to figure out exactly what I need to do, but I'm gonna play around with it some. First off, I'm gonna power it up, make sure it works, but we're gonna probably have full range coming through everything. Then I will play around with the settings and see if I can get low pass going to the subs and obviously a uh, high pass going to the mids and highs. Let's flip the remote switch here for the amp. And we see the red light, amplifier's on. Let's unpause it. Hey, we have sounds. anything through these. All that bass is coming through these. Of course, you're not going to hear that good because they don't want to lapel mic. So let me take those off. So according to the manual, I uh, should be able to just use RCAs in for channels one and two for the whole amp. Now let me make sure. Oh, I might have three and four in there. Nope, three and four are there. So one and two are not, they're not sending signal to the uh, sub side. And it's probably related to something that's not done properly here with the switches. I'll have to look through the manual and see, but I think for now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get another set of RCAs. We'll hook that up so that we can get sound from all the channels. So I have it all working, as you can probably hear. Sounds good. I still am not 100% sure um, about these crossovers. It sounds like I just have a low pass coming out of the subs, but it's probably full range coming out of the mids and high speakers. This one here seems to be the one for the sub. This one seems to be the one for the mids and high channel. But uh, yeah, I'm just, I've got to study up more about how those things work because it is way too freaking complicated should not be that difficult but uh it was fun to get this hooked up fun to try out the alpine head unit here it does work it's a little quirky if i push on it i think the contacts might need to be cleaned or something but it does still work with a disc so thanks for joining me behind the scenes the concept 97 one kind of uh speaker demo test Hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe to both channels, Old School Stereo and Willison Audio Labs. I'll try to keep them both chock full of goodies. Till next time, Big D, I'm out of here.